My name is Wabbit, and I like to have fun. So I'm going to break this into two chapters, the talky bit and then the demonstration. And I'm doing this part because it really explains why I'm doing the demo in the way that I'm doing. Now, if you skip to that part and you're not happy with the way I approached it and you leave that as a comment, I'm going to refer you to this part and then it'll make sense. So while I understand people don't like to hear this part of videos, they want to cut right to the, the demo, I want to give you that option. First, before I get going, I need to make clear that I am not sponsored by, I don't work for Oxy. I'm a fan. I bought this with my own money, and I just want to share things that I have learned, and in this particular case, a new feature that came with the 4.0 firmware update, the pattern generator. Now, what is, what is this thing I'm talking about that I kind of alluded to earlier? Let me start by saying that the Oxy One, I'm a big fan of. I also need to acknowledge that this is a very deep device. I, I can't remember how many pages are in the manual. And one thing that I like about the manual is it even states in the beginning, use the manual as a guide. If you're brand new to the Oxy, I would strongly not recommend reading from page one to the end. And, and unless you come from the sequencer world and, and your brain is built that way, because I tried kind of doing that and it didn't quite click. And you can make this thing as simple as you want. Or again, you can go way into the weeds. And the one thing that I've learned, it's not just with Oxy, it's just in general with any hardware that I have, is I try and keep things very simple, very high level, get those easy wins. And even as I've approached these tutorials, that's how I try and do it, very high level, because I want to wet your palate. If you have a device, I want to give you that easy win, something to say, hey, I can see how this works, versus throwing the entire kitchen sink at you and confusing you. I don't find that that works for me. Now, maybe for you, that's, the, that's how you want. Maybe you want that granular detail. Then this is not for you, and I would you know, go find some other options to learn this functionality. And hopefully I can give you the foundation. Then you can use the manual as your guide to further go in. And there's a concept in Pattern Generator, I'm going to be honest with you, actually kind of two, that are a little above my pay grade. And I've sat down, I've done some research, and I had to kind of ask myself this question. One, I'm a hobbyist. I'm an amateur. I'm not getting paid to do any of this stuff. So I'm really providing a service for free. And how much time and, and frustration do I want to put into this? And then I may even not get it right. Because I've, I've also learned in this space that we're all coming from different paths and you get hit with different questions and scenarios that I can't possibly pre be prepared for or even answer for you. So that's why I'm choosing this very high level approach just to give you the basics. So I, I, I hope that makes sense because once I get into this, then maybe you will see what I'm referring to. And, and the two things I'm gonna say it out front now and then I'll get to it in the demo, it's the XY concept or pattern and then really what this was, um, the idea behind this, the M1 grids module. And as I read that, again, that makes no sense to me. Now, maybe to you it does. And as I talk about this, you'll be like, ah, I get that. But maybe you're like me and you're like, what? That's why I want to talk very high level. Because even in the manual when I referred to the patterns, it didn't quite make sense to me. And I've actually reached out in the... Discord group to try and get some explanation, understanding of what this means. And when I originally did this video, I thought this was just something for drum generators, but it's not. And I actually had to scrap that video because it's, it's, a, it's a pattern generator. And the cool thing is, again, if you're familiar with the Oxy, you'll, you'll know that there are many different ways to generate stuff on here. This is just one. I mean, you've got the matricial mode. You've got you know, randomization, you can use LFO modulation. And I'm, again, I'm going to talk very high level, but there's so many things you can do. And that's why I'm saying this is a very deep device. And I don't want people to get, I mean, I'm not trying to push this on you, but I'm, I'm saying if you have this device, if you are considering this, I want it to be something that you are excited about, that you have fun. 
for me, when I get way in the weeds with my gear, that's just me personally. I get frustrated. Something doesn't make sense, and then I just give up. So I need to put that out there. Let's go ahead and get into the demo. So if you're here now, <laughs> welcome. And uh, as I said, if you don't like this approach and you put a comment how I did this, I'm going to refer you back to the talkie bit, and then maybe it'll make sense. Okay, let's talk about what we have, the connections, and then we'll get into this pattern generator. So obviously the Oxy-1. Off camera here is the MC-707. It doesn't need to be in frame. It's just a sound source. And to be honest with you, I was getting a little tired of using the iPad all the time. And this forces me to kind of mess with this and get some exposure. How this is connected, obviously the Oxy is running off of battery power, internal battery power, uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, MIDI to a five pin then adapter and that goes directly into the MIDI end of the MC-707 and then basically I'm just running two tracks track one and two one is percussion two is synth I'm going to just keep it very simple because I want to demonstrate the two things that you can do on the oxy I am using sequencer four and sequencer two and each of these are corresponding to the uh, MIDI channel in the M MC-707. So I have MIDI channel two for track two, and actually one, MIDI channel one going to track one in the MC-707. Very important thing here with the pattern generator, you must be in multi-track mode for this to work. And then you can kinda do the math here, if you're familiar with this device, you've got four sequencers, which is what one, two, three, and four are, so in theory, you could have four multi-tracks. So let your mind wander just a little bit and think about some of the possibilities that you could do. But again, for this demonstration purposes, I want to focus on using Sequencer 4 for the, I'll just call it drums, and then Sequencer 2, again, for the synth to demonstrate. I mean, they both have the pattern generator, but I'll what, basically this is non-destructive, and that'll make sense when I show you in number two. So let's go ahead and mute our drum sequencer and I just want to focus on the synth. Um, so pattern generator. So it's in multi-track mode and the way that you access this is I hold down the sequencer that I want and I push down on this button here which is your random perform. So let's do that again. And note, I've got these three blue buttons here that light up. And if I activate those, I now have the pattern generator on. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. then let me turn them off. And they go away. All right, let's talk about what just happened here. So with this on, basically, I do shift and the same button, and I now have this menu here called pattern. And what it's showing is density, how often uh, basically an event will occur. Then you've got this XY, and this is what I talked about in the intro. And I'm going to try and keep this super high level. In the, the manual, you actually have a chart near the end that has all the various patterns. And it talks about the x-axis and the y-axis. And that's about as far as I understand it. <laughs> I mean, trust me, x-y pattern, all that thing, that, that, that's something that I'm not really... I, I struggled in, in high school math or whatever it is. All I know is y is your vertical because of the yellow building and X is this way. And basically, these parameters here will generate different patterns. Now, the question is going to be, well, what are the patterns? I don't know that they actually have names. Now, in the manual, it talks about near the end, there were new rhythms that were put in, and I believe it kind of lives closer to the 127 range, but I don't know kind of where it starts and, and begins. But bottom line, what I want to get across in this video is the X and the Y will just give you different patterns. And I'll demonstrate some of that, and that's as far as I want to go. Now, for you, again, 
If you understand the concept, again, this is based off the M1 Grids module, then this is right up your alley. If you don't know, you can Google it and try and you know learn that because I'm not going to explain or answer it. I, I, I give up on that, <laughs> just being honest with you. And then the chaos is pretty self-explanatory. How chaotic will things happen? So let's uh, bring this down just kind of 10. And again, what I'm doing is I'm not putting any patterns here on the actual oxy. When I push play, based on the parameters that I have here, it's going to generate, and you have these three tracks. That is the max that you can have. So across this, it's just going to generate, and that's what you're going to see. It just starts to kind of fill it in. So the KS is at 10. Let's just get crazy and crank it up to 100. Actually, 127 is the max. And if you really pay attention, you can start to kind of see how it pulls away and adds notes over time. So you can adjust that, and then we can So the use case for this is just to, it's not, my recommendation is not to get caught up in, okay, well, what pattern are these? I think that's kind of the wrong approach, me personally. I'm just looking for sounds, and I want something different. So again, if you want to, if you're, if you're a student of, of the manual and, and the details, then go there, and you can take a look, and maybe for you, it will make sense. The way I look at this is, I can just kind of mess around in here and just have a little fun, and I get some generated pa uh, patterns. So that is your pattern generator in terms of using it in, for example, a synthesizer. Now, again, I know I'm using the 707, but just think about it in your scenario. You've got this going out to whatever synth you have. As long as you have the right MIDI channel set up, then you can just have this go out and do what you want to do and then go on your you know, synthesizer and, and make your changes to your effects. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail in terms of demonstrating, but what I will say is that you can use LFO to affect these parameters. So if you don't want to manually do this, you can actually use the built. There's two LFOs in the Oxy one, and you can set it up to affect one of these four parameters. The other thing, and I'm trying to make sure I get this right from the manual, density can affect each of these three tracks. So each of these three tracks has its own density. The X, Y, and chaos is applied to all three at once. Hope that makes sense. So, and you also can do modulation as well, too. Again, I'm not going to demonstrate that. I just want to mention to you that that can be done. And that's where I talked about earlier. That's where it kind of gets to me in the weeds. I just want to be able to know, hey, what does this thing do? And again, high level, that's what that does. All right, let's mute sequencer two, and let's go to sequencer four. Now, this is where I want to demonstrate the non-destructive nature. Now, in here, you see that I have a pattern that I manually punched in before I started recording. So let's go ahead... So barring me changing anything in the settings in terms of generator, in terms of trig probability, those kind of things, this is going to be a static pattern. Okay, now to activate this, it's the same process. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this play. Sequencer button, perform button. There's the three blue buttons. Now, as I because it's playing, when I activate this, Based on the settings, I'll come back to that. It will fill in notes in addition to the pattern that I have. Shift. Now I go to the pattern. And in here, the chaos is at zero. Let's bring that up. Play with the X, Y. So again, you're doing something, you want to add a little variety to it, and then when I want to take that away, 
going back to the pattern. So that's the non-destructive. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you that when you're doing something like this, and it, it could be also done on sequencer too. I just want to demonstrate drums versus sequencer. So that is a cool thing about the pattern generator that it's not going to, if you lay down a pattern yourself, it's not going to mess that up. It'll just kind of add a little spice variety. And that's it in terms of pattern generator. Again, you can use some other things like LFO. And I, and I know I'm kind of glossing over stuff. Yet this is the approach that I'm going to take. I just really want to expose you to what this is, the basics. <laughs> and then if this sounds interesting to you, try it out. And if you like to do more, you want to throw LFOs on, you want to get crazy with it, that's where the manual can be your guide. It can, you can go look at that uh, drum pattern. I think it's called drum patterns, if I'm not mistaken, when you look in the manual. And then you can actually take a look at that. And you may be like me. You may look at it and like, uh, I don't get this. Or because you understand how all this stuff works, it makes sense to you. So that's how I'm approaching this. I, I, I really hope that this did not confuse you. I, I hope it at least gave you um, a little basic understanding, and, and that's what I wanted to try and accomplish. If I failed, hey, let me know. <laughs> um, I've got one more tutorial that I, that I want to do with this device is the new loop function. Um, just to let you know that I don't know if there is a bug or a work as designed in, in that. I'll get to that in the video. I've reached out to the developer and just waiting to hear a response, but I'm going to push forward with the video. Again, I'll make that comment in there. Um, and that's all I got. Um, thank you for your time. Get out there. You know the whole deal that I like to do at the end of these videos. I do hope to catch you in another video. Till then, until then, keep jamming.